What up, nerds? This is Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got a perfect score on the SAT and a perfect score on the ACT. And today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about special right triangles. So special right triangles show up all over the SAT and very frequently on the ACT. You need to be prepared to deal with them because you are almost certainly going to see them on your tests. Uh, there are two special triangles especially that we want to be familiar with, so I'm going to teach those to you now. I'm going to teach them to you in the context of a difficult geometry problem like the one on this page. But first, let's talk about the triangles themselves. The first special triangle you need to be familiar with is called a 30-60-90. It's called that because it contains a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. So I'll draw up a rough version of a 30-60-90 triangle right here. Now this is not exact, but it should give you an idea of roughly what a 30-60-90 will look like. It looks about like this. Um, and in this triangle, obviously the smallest angle is the 30 degree angle. The largest angle is the right angle, and the other angle is 60 degrees. So that's why it's called a 30-60-90 triangle. Now they won't call it that on the test in my experience, but that's what people refer to it as in everyday language, 30-60-90 triangle. Now, uh, what you need to know about a 30-60-90 triangle especially is the relationship of its side lengths. So its side lengths are proportional. The smallest side, if we start there and if we call it x, then the hypotenuse is 2x, and the long side, which is to say the long side that is not the hypotenuse, is x root 3. Now, this information is actually given to you on the formula page of the SAT. So you don't necessarily have to memorize it, but I think it's a good idea. If you have to look back to the formula page to find the relationship between these side links on the SAT on test day, you might be in trouble. You should be comfortable enough with using them that you don't have to look back because you know them. Here's how I remember it. Start with the short side. Whatever information they give you, find the short side. Then double it to find the hypotenuse, and then go back to the short side and multiply it by root three to find the long side. Now, one more tip about a 30-60-90 triangle. If you ever see a root 3 that gets anywhere near a triangle on the SAT, in my experience, there's a really, really high chance that that is a 30-60-90 triangle or that there is a 30-60-90 triangle involved in that question in some way. Let me restate that in different terms. In my experience, I have never seen a problem on the SAT that had a root 3 and a triangle but didn't have a 30-60-90 triangle. In other words, I think if you see a root 3 and you see a triangle, you should be trying to find that 30, 60, 90. So that's a huge hint that can really help you over somebody who's not aware of that. It can take a problem that would be really difficult and make it much, much easier. The other type of triangle we need to be familiar with, the other type of special triangle that we need to be familiar with, that is, is called a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And as you can imagine, that's because it contains two 45 degree angles and a 90 degree angle. Now it's called a 45, 45, 90, and it also is the only way that you can form a right isosceles triangle. So if I know that I have a triangle that is a right triangle, and I know that it is also isosceles, that means the two non-right angles must be equal to each other, which means they both must be 45 degrees. So this is the only way to form a right isosceles triangle as well. Now, again, this is a rough drawing. It's not exact, but you get the idea. It has side lengths that are equal. If we call those side lengths x, then the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 is x root 2. So again, I think you should start by finding the side length. If you can find the side length, then you'll easily be able to find the hypotenuse link just multiply the side length by root 2 and just like if I ever see a root 3 get anywhere near a right triangle I know it's probably a 30 60 90 if you see a root 2 get anywhere near a right triangle it's probably a 45 45 90 that's a huge hint so 45 45 90 and 30 60 90 are the two that you need to know now let's put them to work on a practice problem so here's a good one for us to get started on. In the figure above, point C is the center of the circle. Line segments AP and BP are tangent to the circle at points A and B respectively, and the segments intersect at point P as shown. If angle ABP is equal to 60 degrees and the area of the circle is 16 pi, what is the distance from C to P? So how are we going to solve this? Well, I know that the angle 
from A to B is 60 degrees here. So I can go ahead and mark that, all right? And it looks like this line from C to P bisects it. I know that because C is the center, and the line segments from C to A and C to B then must be radii of the circle. They must have the same length, which means that the line segment C to P must bisect the angle APB. That 60 degree angle is bisected into two 30 degree angles. I also know that whenever a tangent touches a circle, it touches it at a right angle relative to a radius at that point. In other words, if you draw a radius from the center of the circle to the point at which the line touches the circle tangent, then that forms a 90 degree angle. Tangents always touch the circle at a 90 degree angle. All right, so it looks like now we have two 30, 60, 90 triangles. I know if this angle's 90 and this angle's 30, then this other one has to be 60, okay? So I can go ahead and mark it 60, all right? Uh, the same is true for the other triangle as well. This triangle is 60 degrees as well. Now let's take a look at what they want us to find. What is the distance from C to P? So looking at my two 30, 60, 90 triangles, it looks like that distance that line is opposite the 90 degree angle in each triangle, which means in my 30, 60, 90 triangle, it is the hypotenuse, this line CP. So if I can figure out what the short side length is, I'll just double it to find CP. So how do I find my short side length? Well, in this case, the short side is a radius of the circle. And I know that the area of the circle is 16 pi. Now, I also know that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared, or pi r squared. In this case, 16 pi is the area of the circle. That's equal to pi r squared. So I can cancel the pi's on each side. It looks like 16 equals my radius squared. Take the square root of each side. 4 is my radius. Since 4 is my radius, I will double that 4 to find the length of CP. It looks like CP is 8 units long. And that's all you need to know about special right triangles. Please don't forget to smash that like button if you found this video helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Expert's YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video and let us know what you want to hear about in our next video. What do you want advice on from a two-time perfect score? Leave us a comment and we might feature your suggested topic in our next video. There's also a coupon code below this video that you can use to there's also a coupon code in the description below this video that you can use to get discounts on all of our products on our website, prepexpert.com. You can sign up for a course with myself or another instructor, or you can sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.